Swashing, could you tell us a little bit about the ARC and how it came into existence? Well, the ARC has been around since 1995, so it's actually 18 years old this year, so the ARC is an adult. <laughs> um, so the ARC came about really um, because there was a big regeneration going on in the area in Temple Bar, and also around the same time the Irish government had ratified the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, and there was an article in that um, convention which states that children should have the same rights to culture as adults do. And it was kind of on the back of that, there was a lot of change going on around the way society sort of thinks about and, and interacts with children. Um, but on the back of that, it was decided at the time that there should be a dedicated space in what was going to be the new cultural quarter in Dublin for children as citizens. So essentially, we're very much a rights-based organisation. It's really about children have a right to experience culture and the arts as much as adults. And that's really what we stand for. Um, and I suppose coming from that point of view as well, we take a very broad view of culture and the arts. So we're multidisciplinary. I look after the music programming um, and we also have a theatre programmer. We also do visual art, literature, film, dance, and we cross over into other things that wouldn't necessarily be viewed as strictly culture. We do sometimes cross collaboration with science projects. Last year we did a, a big summer project for Dublin European City of Science, for example. So um, it's quite broad, our interpretation of it. But the main state of work really focuses on the two main performing arts, music and theatre and visual art. Um, and we're, we're fairly full with those. And then we do smaller amounts of, of the other um, art forms in, in a general sort of year. Yeah. And you're the music programmer here. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your role and what your day-to-day -day tasks would involve? So, uh, yes, I'm the music programmer here, which basically means that I'm in charge of everything that goes on here in terms of music. Um, and I also have to dream up the ideas, which is the really fun bit. <laughs> so I just have to um, uh, come up with different imaginative ways of interacting um, or to get children to interact with music. So it's everything from different kinds of performances of music, workshops, installations, and everything in between. Uh, very often I'll work in collaboration with my colleagues as well. So we do cross art uh, events and projects and workshops as well. So we might mix music with theatre or mix music with visual art. And we try and dovetail things as much as possible. So the ARC welcomes children from very young age young age of two all the way up to 12 and um, so there's a big difference there so how do you adapt your programs to suit children of all ages yeah well that's a big big challenge um, and unlike programming for an adult audience um, where it's just one audience really when you're working with that kind of age range of children it's audiences you know so you do have to think about it quite differently for a start um, younger children obviously won't you won't hold their attention for as long so events have to be a lot shorter but also the content has to be different it has to be accessible and appropriate for their age um, but our main drive no matter what age the children are is to really just awaken their curiosity and excite their imagination um, about in my case music um, and then with the other art forms likewise we want them to just really open up their imagination and their creativity and just go wild with it really when they're in the arc and um, we do our best to stimulate that we also don't repeat programs per se um, we tend to come up with new ideas all the time so that every time a child comes back to the arc they don't have the same experience so that they'll be opened up in some new way around music. That's our aim anyway. Um, the ARC recently ran a programme called Lights, Camera, Music. Could you tell us a little bit about what that involved and how the children responded to it in general? Lights, Camera, Music was one of our big music programmes here in the ARC and it ran for two full months. So it was really a chance to kind of get really stuck in and provide uh, a really rich uh, choice of different kinds of ways of children to get stuck into composing music and writing music and improvising music and basically making up their own music rather than performing something that somebody else has written. So we decided to use film 
as the stimulus for this um, because film is so popular with children as well. Um, so I had a huge variety of musicians and they all came in and they were resident in the ARC for two weeks each and they would all kind of work with slightly different film material but they also have their own different approaches to music. So in the combination um, there was loads to choose from. So for example we, we started off with uh, workshops by uh, pianist Elaine Lobenstein who specialises in live improvisation to silent movies that's what she mainly does and she goes around the world playing the piano at film festivals so she ran some fabulous workshops and she had some beautiful archive material from the Australian film archive that we worked with in the workshops um, and uh, so she was here for the first two weeks then we moved into something much more contemporary with composer Karen Power who is a very contemporary Irish composer and she works with electronics and also a lot of what she calls found sounds so everyday objects like leaves and bottles and tin foil and stones um, and just it's amazing the sounds you can make out of them you know you could suddenly you feel like you're in a forest or something like that um, so that was really different but very very tactile as well so there was this kind of element where the children were, could feel the sound as well which obviously you don't get to do a lot with music so that was really really different and really great and then um, we moved into two weeks with composer Brian Irvine um, and he works very much he uses words as a starting point and taking the rhythms and melodies out of words and then building it out of that so he used the stories in the film, little animations and so on, to create the words and then the music came out of that. And then for the last two weeks, we went into outer space <laughs> um, and we had uh, a duo, uh, composer Nick Roth um, with uh, Judith, Judith Ring, who's an electronic kind of sound artist um, and musician. And they were very much inspired by film footage from the Hubble telescope and they put it together into a sequence so it was like a trip through space and the children had to create the music to go with this um, in the workshops so it was it was it was out there <laughs> but it was it was brilliant fun um, so and the very very last week we finished up with a partnership with the big bang festival um, so there was a lot of percussion in in the workshops and we used slapstick film so they could make the sounds of the people falling and the you know the bombs going on whatever the, the cannons going off and um, and then we also had a, a number of different performances through the program as well where children could come and be an audience member yeah. and watch a film and hear musicians playing live to the film as well. From your experience how do you think children respond to music in general? I, children just love music. I mean my own background actually is as a musician and songwriter and I used to run a lot of music workshops myself and it always used to amaze me when you run workshops for very little children um, so the two-year-old arrives to, to, to do the workshop, you know, and they're, you know, they're able to kind of stand and walk around and, and sing as well. You know, yeah. even at that age, they, they're just imitating everything. So if you're singing and if the parent is with them, joins in, they'll usually give it a go. Um, but also there'd be the little one who's six months old, who's in the cot, you know, or in the little carry on um, uh, uh, thing from the car. And they would just start, to, they immediately start moving to the rhythm. And it's amazing how precise that is, even in very young children. And there's been a lot of studies done around that, that actually rhythm is um, now been proven to be innate and it's completely pre-verbal and that we're born with this. Obviously, it gets developed differently by different cultural settings. Yeah. Um, but that, that basic ability to follow rhythm and to respond to it is um, you know, innate to all human beings all over the world. Do you think music contributes to a child's development? Hugely, yeah. I think there's obvious stuff around confidence that develops um, from music because it's a very extroverted kind of art form, you know, because of the performing side of it as well. Yeah. Um, but also there's that thing in music where you have to work with other people. So you have to collaborate, you know, and, um, you know, this, this is incredibly valuable for children that they learn to work with others towards a mutual goal. So it's not about competition, but it's about collaboration and reaching something satisfying together and that you can do so much more when you've got like different people who can play different things. You can create all different kinds of sounds than what you could maybe on your own. Yeah. Um, so I just think, and I really, I've just seen it time and time again. I, I really believe that music is basically natural for human beings. And uh, the earlier you work with children, the more you see that, like the younger age, because they, there's no, 
there's no fear. They just go for it. It's, it's really normal and natural and yeah. enjoyable. That's the, that's the main thing, really. It's just a real pleasure. Yeah. Um, and there's such a good um, feeling after being involved in music. So it's just incredibly important for people, I think, to you, provide you, those experiences for their children, you know. Do you think music education is accessible enough for all children? I think it's quite patchy, um, unfortunately. Um, it, that's on sort of on the formal side. Mm. Um, it's obviously improving a lot with the rollout of this new Music Generation um, project, which is rolling out uh, over quite a lot of the country, um, which is absolutely wonderful. And I think as well, though, there's a lot that parents can do at home, but if they themselves didn't have that experience when they were younger and they're lacking in confidence, they often don't know what to do. And they might like to do music with their children, but they feel a bit nervous about it or something. But actually, if they come to a few workshops and even they learn a few songs, generally speaking, they kind of realize this is actually really helpful. You know, yeah. I can help my child to calm down or go to sleep or, do, you know, there's lots of ways to kind of work it into the day to help you out as a parent as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know my own dad was brilliant at this, so I was quite lucky and he would just whenever we were cranky or whatever, he'd just bring out the guitar and make up a silly song or just, you know. Yeah. So there's lots of sort of informal stuff that can happen in the home, which really helps as well. And then if a child is then in a more formal music situation, it won't feel in any way strange or um, fearful for them, you know. What would your advice be for parents whose children are shown an interest in music? A lot of parents can see music as being something that's expensive, you know, taking up an instrument and going to lessons. So what would your advice to parents be? I think, you know, there's no, I don't think you should rush a child into learning an instrument. I, I do think it's really good to expose them to lots of different types of music and lots of different instruments. So, you know, they could bring them into the ARC and come to some concerts here and uh, we program all kinds of music so they can, you know, see different music happening and see different instruments being played in the theatre space here. Um, also, there's just simple stuff you can do at home if you don't play yourself. You could, I mean, it's so, music is so accessible now, recorded music. And just just really put on your favorite music and even just dance around and because the dancing develops rhythmic skill anyway so um, and just really trying to encourage them to respond to it in any way you know you can play silly games getting them to conduct a recorded orchestra and stuff like that um, there's lots of really fun stuff you can do that's really really easy um, but I just think the main thing is to open up their ears and, and give them as rich uh, a, a music sound world in a way when they're younger um, because then they will just develop that curiosity about sound and about music and eventually they'll take it their own way you know where their interests lie. And can you tell us a little bit about the ARC's plans for music for the coming months? What have you got lined up? So in the October midterm break we're going to have a popular music week which is the first time we're doing this and I'm uh, planning that this is going to be a fixture in the autumn. Um, so that's all kinds of popular music fun. We're actually going to have um, jams for children who play instruments so they can just turn up and jam and join in a band basically for as long or as short as they want. We're going to have three of those and uh, a special one that's in partnership with the Bram Stoker Festival which we're calling the Bram Jam <laughs> where they can come in a vampire outfit if they want. Um, and that one will have a particular Halloween flavour. We're also going to have DJ workshops. Um, we're going to have a monster mash with the DJ here and other musician, guest musicians popping in. Um, we're going to have a gig on the Bank Holiday Monday, um, beatboxing workshops. And also for the little ones, we're doing um, music workshops inspired by popular music called Rock On Baby. <laughs> so that's in October. Um, and then in the new year, we have our annual fixture around traditional music. Um, we do the family and children's programming for Tradfest here in Temple Bar. Um, and we will have sessions for children, gigs. Uh, workshops. Last year we we unveiled the ukulele Kaylee which has been a great success and has actually gone around to loads of festivals this year. Um, so something along those lines again for this year um, and then we're heading into the spring we're going to have um, a teddy bear exhibition in the building so there'll be some music events around that performances and workshops themed on songs uh, about bears and for older children kind of moving into sort of we're looking at the sort of ecology and the sort of ecology issues and maybe writing some songs around that um, and then heading into the 
Easter we're doing a special event in music to celebrate um, the millennial anniversary of the Battle of Clontarf. It's a thousand years since the Battle of Clontarf in 2014. So we um, are commissioning two traditional musicians to produce a show inspired by Brian Brew's harp and then it's called 1014 and then we're going to take that on tour around the country to eight different venues um, so that'll just be a really fun way of kind of interacting with the history of the Vatican Tower but through music yeah. And then into the summer, we are going to actually have a comedy festival for children. So I have a lineup of lots of different really good music acts, but who use me comedy as their kind of performance style. Yeah. So they're top class musicians, but they're just really humorous in the way that they deliver it. And we just think that the children are just going to love it. Um, but it's not going to be just music. There'll obviously there will be stand up um, events for children as well, stand up comedy, theatre with a comedy. Um, uh, influence, uh, funny dance performances, we'll have workshops in spoof songwriting and silly soundscape making and things like that as well. Brilliant. So that's going to be the summer of next year. Yeah. Um, and then we're also going to be doing our first ever music proms. So that's my third fixture in the music calendar, which is the classical music um, event of the year. Um, don't miss it. So it's going to, going to be on the bank holiday Monday in August. And we're going to play that out onto Meeting House Square so a um, big orchestral experience. We're working with the RT Concert Orchestra on that one. Yeah. And again, we're hoping that that's going to be an annual event for families. So that throughout the year, um, we have certain big programs, like the Lights, Camera, Music one that we just finished. We have certain big chunks of the year where we do big programming around music. And it, we have a huge focus on, on that for art form. But in between, we do these kind of shorter fixtures because we want people to have the opportunity to come to the Arc and interact with music throughout the year. Yeah. Um, so that's and that there's a wide, wide variety, you know, that they yeah. can come and hear all kinds of music and see musicians of all kinds doing their thing and inspiring the children either through the performance or interacting them more closely in a workshop. And maybe then that would inspire them to take up a particular instrument or go a certain way with, you know, their music as they grow. Music!